Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was a powerful nation in the 16th and early 17th century, and it was able to defend itself against their powerful neighbours. However, by the middle of the 17th century, a string of disastrous wars left their economy in tatters and their political system in turmoil. The recovery process was made worse because of a parliamentary device, Librum Veto, which required unanimity amongst the nobility for any laws to pass. This meant that any one person could veto a reform or plan, and foreign powers often used bribes to make sure the nation remained weak and indecisive. The nobility in the Commonwealth also, uniquely in the region, elected their king. This resulted in foreign powers backing claimants and having them under their influence. In 1732, Prussia, Austria and Russia signed the Treaty of the Black Eagles to unite in support of their favoured claimant. The disputed election of 1733 resulted in these three powers fighting with France and Spain in the War of the Polish Succession. However, when the next election was held in 1764, France and Austria was left weakened after the Seven Years' War. This meant Russia was free to help Stanislav August Poniatowski, the lover of Russian Empress Catherine the Great, get elected. He tried to help reform the Commonwealth and rebuild its strength, something their neighbours didn't want to see. Also, many in Poland opposed his reforms and the foreign influence, so united in the Bar Confederation and rebelled. Stanislav called for Russian aid in suppressing the uprising which began in 1768, and this brought Poland into a civil war. Meanwhile, in the early 1770s, Russia was in a war against the Ottomans and advancing south, notably into Moldavia, a region which the Austrians wanted. The balance of power in the region was shaken as the Russians were surpassing the Austrians in strength. Frederick II of Prussia, who hated the Polish, engineered the partitions to restore the balance of power and repair relations with Austria and Russia. In 1772, Russia and Austria agreed with Frederick's plans to partition. Russia withdrew from Moldavia and together all three nations moved troops into the predetermined regions. And with the Commonwealth embroiled in a civil war, there was very little resistance. Austria, probably the weakest of the states, received the economically prosperous regions in the south around Lviv. Russia took the poorer regions in the north, and the Prussians united their own kingdom. In the aftermath of the first partition, Poland tried to stabilize their nation while Russia and Austria were busy fighting elsewhere, and the Polish even formed an alliance with Prussia in 1790. In 1791, they introduced Europe's first national constitution. However, this angered the Russians who felt the Polish were once again trying to challenge Russian influence in their nation. So, in 1792, the Russians helped unite a group of conservative Polish magnates, known as the Targowice Confederation, and they rebelled. The Confederation then invited the Russians to help them fight the reforms in May 1792. The following war ended with a Russian victory after just a couple months of fighting. Polish kings surrendered with little resistance, hoping it would bring about a reasonable diplomatic solution, but it wasn't to be. Prussia, who was now fighting revolutionary France, said they should be compensated for remaining neutral. Russia, who had intentionally only hoped to suppress the reforms, agreed and together they divided up Poland once again. Russia took a lot of modern-day Ukraine and Belarus, while the Prussians took important cities like Poznan and Gdansk. Poland was now reduced to a minor power, and the Polish military were unhappy at their king for surrendering without really having been defeated in any battles. A general named Kochushko began to organize resistance in 1794. With thousands of men, many armed with just axes and scythes, he marched on Warsaw. But the Russians sent a large army into Poland and crushed the uprising. Austria, Prussia and Russia came together and agreed that Poland should be wiped off the map to stop any similar uprisings. Prussia took Warsaw, Austria moved into Krakow and Lublin, and Russia expanded west and took Vilnius. Poland was finally wiped off the map. However, in just over a decade during the Napoleonic Wars, the Duchy of Warsaw was created as a French client state, but it only existed until Napoleon's demise. Over the next century, there were numerous rebellions across the former Polish territories. However, the Polish had to wait until the end of the First World War before Poland re-emerged as a nation. 